Hello one and all and welcome to the Math Magic Show. In this one, let's take a look at factoring a trinomial using AC with grouping. So let me show you what I mean here. I have an expression that looks like the following. It says 3x squared plus 4x minus 4. So I'm going to use the AC method and then use grouping also. So the 3 is the A and the negative 4 is the C. So then you multiply them as the first step towards the factorization. So when I do that here, I'll have 3 times negative 4, which is negative 12. That negative 12 is useful because you can use that to be right the 4x that you see in the middle. So in other words, this 4x, and I do hope that's above my head, is just a coefficient on the middle term there. I want to be able to rewrite that in such a way that I can factor the grouping. So how do I go about that? Take a look. We need two numbers that multiply to negative 12, which is just the value of a times c, and then add up to 4. That 4 is the coefficient on the x in the middle term. So how do you find those two numbers? That can be a bit of a tricky, long process. Sometimes you just do guess and check and so on. So what I mean by that is the following. Take a look. This is how I did it. So I take my negative 12 and I look at its factors. So I put negative 2 times 2 times 3 because negative 2 times neg positive 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. The way you group these is important for the following reason. Because, for example, if I keep the negative 2 right here separate, then the 2 times the 3 will give me a 6, which is useful in this case because negative 2 times 6 will be that negative 12 in brown there, and then negative 2 plus 6 will be that positive 4, which is the coefficient on the x. This stage, depending on whether the value of ac is big or small, can be a qu quite time-consuming. So if you had like a 96 that you had to break down, this could, <laughs> this could be a very long process here. Okay, that's why I chose negative 12. It's reasonable, but not too easy, I think. So with that in place, take a look. The next stage is to try to make use of these values to rewrite the middle term. So first, let's take a look at a failed attempt to do that. So what do I mean by that? Well, look right here. I have rewritten the middle term for x as negative 2x plus 6x. Remember that this negative 2 that's above my head, that's coming from that negative 2 there above my head, you see? And then this 6 above my head, that's coming from that 6 above my head. So I'm grouping. And it is true that negative 2x plus 6x is positive 4x. But it's not useful for the following reason. 3 and negative 2, hopefully those are on either side of my head, as you can see there, don't have any common factors, so you can't factor anything really beyond so that is giving us a big clue, which is that the way we arrange the middle terms is really important. So let's take a look at another possible way of arranging them. Let me go to the top here. So in the top, if we arrange them now as positive 6x minus 2x, and why would I want to do it this way? Take a look at the next stage. When I look here, down below I observe the following. We have 3x in brown and another 3x in brown, and it kind of leaves an x plus 2 in the middle. So I took the 3x squared and I wrote it as 3x times x, and I took the 6x and I wrote it as 2 times 3x. So the 3x is a common factor in those two terms, uh, basically on either side of the plus above my head. I hope that's above my head. And now what I can do with that 3x would be to just factor it, you see? But that's not it, because now take a look at the next one. Over here, again, you see that there's a negative 2 in front of the x, and there's a negative 2 times 2. So I've rewritten the negative 4, which is a constant, as negative 2 times 2, and I've done that because it shows me two purple negative 2s. So I'm identifying common factors that I can pull outside parentheses. Let's move on to the next stage. So the next stage now will look like this. That brown 3x is now pulled out as 1 3x, and what's left inside the parentheses is then just, as you can see there, x plus 2 from above. Just close and close it within parentheses. At the next stage, that negative 2 that I identified as a common factor above now goes outside the parentheses, and x plus 2 is what is left over. Remember this important bit, which is that because that negative is with the 2, the purple 2, that goes outside, which means what's left inside the parentheses is x plus, po x plus 2. In other words, a positive 2. So that's visible there above my head. And now, when I looked with these two, I observed clearly that there's an x plus 2 on the right and an x plus 2 on the left on the left, so that's a common factor I can pull out again. So let's do that as the next stage, and let's finish up. So what I've done here is 
I took the 3x minus 2, so I took the 3x and light brown, the purple negative 2, I put them together into one binomial, and the x plus 2 is kind of pulled out as one quantity to the right of the 3x minus 2. It doesn't really make any difference whether you write this as 3x minus 2 times x plus 2, or you put x plus 2 times 3x minus 2. It should give you the same expression at the end. To check factoring, what we always do, of course, is you just FOIL. So if you FOIL, <laughs> if you FOIL 3x minus 2 with x plus 2, you will see you should restore the original expression, which is 3x squared plus 4x minus 4. So FOIL, and you will see it works. Now, I do know, obviously, that there are other ways of doing this. I want to be clear on that point. This is a way of doing it. I would try to show as much detail as I know how to show, because I think that a reliable method is always a useful thing. Some people like to do things often with guessing, and that works for them. That's perfect, okay? But sometimes I can break down, especially when the numbers get a little bit too big. So I think having a reliable method in place is always useful. Thank you. Please have a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in another video.